I'm now gonna show you the very best way to cut out photos inside of Photoshop. Works really great for hair and... I'm gonna show you how to cut out trees and difficult subjects in Photoshop. Oh. I like to cut out hard edges like vehicles and things like that inside of Photoshop. So now I'm gonna show you three great ways of cutting out photos inside of Photoshop. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop in Lightroom. Yes, I have been accused of having a little too much fun from time to time. But one thing that's not always fun is cutting out photos. So what if you do have different scenarios such as we have hair and fur, or maybe we have very sharp hard edges or complex selections like a tree. Um, so which method do we choose? So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to show you three different methods for selecting photographs and I'm also going to show you how to pick which is the best method for your photograph. So the very first one we're going to jump into is the very popular one with hair. By the way, we have a very wide range of users here that watch these tutorials. I'm curious, how long have you been using Photoshop and what's the very first version you started on? Just drop that into the comments and let us know. Okay, so the three examples we're going to use here is one, we've got a lady with hair, we've got curly hair, so it's not so easy. We're going to have a hard edge selection here on the sports car, and then we've got this tree with all these little bits in between, and we're going to have a look at the best method for cutting out each one of these. By the way, I grabbed these photos from Adobe Stock. It's a great place to grab photos, and I'll give you a link underneath for 10 free images. I'll also give you a link where you can grab the exact same photos that I'm using here. So let's get started on this very first one. And this is a very basic technique we're gonna start with. We're gonna go down and we're gonna grab the Quick Select tool. So a lot of the time, this might be your go-to place to get started. So here's the thing, we can go and we can start selecting on our woman here, but if it, we see a background that's more consistent, maybe it's quicker to make a selection around the background here. See what we're doing? We're just selecting around there just to get us started. And now what we wanna do is inverse the selection, so we're selecting our subject here. So let me just make this brush a little bit smaller here and I just want to kind of just grab a couple of these little areas in here because this will help us with our selections there. Don't worry about getting it exactly perfect. We just want to get it more or less there. So we've got some gaps in there. We've got some bits of hair that we really need to pick up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go under the select menu and then we're going to choose to inverse the selection. And you can see there there's a keyboard shortcut which is command shift I or control shift I on Windows. So we're going to inverse and now we've selected our woman. So that was a very quick way of doing it. So you always want to select the easiest part of the photo and um, consider inversing the selection and it will help you. So now we want to go up into the select and mask. So we're going to grab our select and mask and this is where we're going to clean up our selection. Now you can see we've got this opacity slider here. So if we move it all the way to the left, it does nothing. Move it all the way to the right, you can see the complete cutout. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth in all these settings because I have another tutorial that I'll link in the notes underneath in the comments there where you can go much more in-depth in cutting out hair. So the tool we're going to use here is this Refine Edge and we're just going to go around these edges here where the hair is. And you can see what it's doing now is it's just starting to determine what's hair and what's background. And I'm just going to go around here, just following around the edges of the hair. Now, this works just as well for things like fur, smoke, things like that. Works very well. So this tool is a great tool when we're working with, you know, soft edge selections such as hair. Now, for something right at the fingers here, we want to make this just a little smaller. And notice what we're doing. As we're selecting certain areas, it's actually updating the entire image. It's becoming more intelligent. So uh, the more time you kind of spend going through here, just kind of touching this up and refining it, it's going to get better and better. Okay, so we've got a little bit there. What we're going to do is just going to increase our radius just a little bit. I'm just going to take that up to about one pixel there. And if you see it kind of looks fuzzy around the edges, you can increase our contrast just a touch. And that'll just clean up those edges. So I'm not going to go into all the settings once again. What we're going to do now is we're just going to click Decontaminate Colors. Notice what that does. It just brings out the individual strands of hair. And we're going to drop this on a new layer with a layer mask. And we're going to click OK. And there we go. We've cut out 
our subject. And now because we've got a layer mask, we can go in if we need to refine those edges or touch them up like certain areas in here, we just paint with black and it'll bring back the areas, paint with white and that will remove the areas so you can go in and do that. All right, the second task we have now is a tree. Now you could look at this and say, okay, well, do we just do the same method? Let's just grab the quick select and start selecting around here. But look at all these non-contiguous or non-joined areas. So I'm just going to hit control D. When you've got all these like little holes in your selection, the quick select tool is not the best option anymore. So there are a couple of options. If you want to go real old school, you could grab the magic wand and make sure you turn off contiguous and you could start selecting like that and notice that's going to pick up the holes in there. And if we hit the shift key, we could go through and start selecting. But let me just hit control D because we have a large area to cover. If it was a smaller area, maybe that method would work. But when you have a large area to cover and you've got lots of little tiny holes and notice in the background, we've got predominantly one color. So what's going to work best here is color range. So we're going to choose select. We're going to grab our color range tool. And then with the color range, we grab our eyedropper and we just click. And notice when we click here, you see it's picking up that blue. Now, what would, the trick to this is to grab the eyedropper with the plus and click and drag that through the different colors. Notice as I'm doing that, we see a nice mask here. And if I can change this preview here to grayscale, you can see nicely what we've got. So what we want to do is play around with the fuzziness. You want to take this fuzziness down where we're not losing detail, but see when these grays are starting to sneak in, you want to pull it up just enough that those grays are gone and we've got a nice clean mask right here. So I'm just going to click on none for our preview again, click select and notice we've got everything selected there. Now notice once again, we've selected the inverse of our object. So what we want to do is actually just want to inverse this. So rather than selecting the inverse, we're going to mask it out. When you apply the mask, it's just going to create a layer mask and it's going to hide the unselected areas. So what we want to do is hold the alt or the option key. And this will do the equivalent of inverting the mask while creating it. And now if we click on the mask there, boom, hides our background and we're good to go. Now you could go in and refine it if you needed to. Once again, we've got a mask there. And if you need to kind of go in and refine it a little bit, you could use a color range to select some of the green and play around like that. All right, and I also have another tutorial I'll link where I go more in depth into this. Let's go to the third method here. And the third method is where we want to get a good, clean, sharp edge. Now, when it comes to getting a good, clean, sharp edge, nothing beats the pen tool for a number of reasons. One, it's a vector, which means it's resolution independent, which means that those edges are going to be crisp no matter how large or how small you scale that image. It's going to be pixel perfect. Um, it's a little bit more manual work, but when you want hard edges that are really going to hold up the things like print, when you zoom in, you're going to look at them nice and large. This is the go to tool. All right, so what we want to do now is we're going to grab the pen tool and make sure up the top here, we've got the options. We can do pixels, paths, or shapes. In this case, I'm going to choose the path because I want to create a path. I don't want it to be filled. And we're going to click and drag up because we want to start our curve direction that way. Notice we've got a pretty nice curve all the way to there. So I'm just going to complete that. And notice how I'm changing the angle. And we're going to come back and refine this later, but see how I can make that fit. Now the goal here is to cover this object with the least amount of points as possible. The less amount of points we get, the sharper our object's going to look. So I'm just going to tap here and notice it looks weird. We'll come back and we'll fix it. So for areas like that, I just tap, tap, tap. And that looks nice. Let's fill it up here. I'm going to go down there and I'm just going to tap on those edges because we're going to come in and fix that one. I'm going to pull that out. The reason I'm pulling it out is to set the direction of the curve. See that? And I'm just going to finish it here. And I'm just going to go off here around the edge because all I want to do is just, you know, select it around here. The ground doesn't matter. We'd be keeping the ground. All right. So this is where we go in and we refine this a little bit. We're just going to click and move in on here. So if I hit the space bar, I can move this around while I'm drawing. Okay, so under the pen tool, if we go further down here, you're going to notice that we've got path and direct selection. So if we grab the path selection, it will select the entire path. If we grab the direct selection and we click on a point, 
notice it will select one of these points. So now we can use this to kind of refine this. See what I'm doing is I'm pulling from the other end to just kind of get that as nice as I can. Now I'm just going to move that in a little bit and try to fix that. Notice I'm not going to be able to get all the way there. So what I'm going to do is add a point here. So I'm just going to grab this anchor point here and just click on there. And I'm just going to lift it for a second, let it take. And now I'm just going to pull it in. And now I'm going to select this. See how I can just refine that a little bit. Notice though, when I move on here, it's moving both sides. If I hold the Alt or the Option key, I'll work on just one side. See that? So now I can work on the top part without messing up the bottom. And then essentially, this is how I would continue to work. Just holding down that out of that option and just making that fit nicely. You know, sometimes it gets really weird in here. And when this kind of stuff happens, what I like to do is grab that curve and see if I can kind of untangle it. Sometimes you can untangle it, you know, like a piece of fishing line. And then other times the curve's just going the wrong way. So the way to fix it when that happens is just grab the convert point and then just click on there. And what that will do is it will just convert these to a straight line. But I don't want that to affect both of them, so I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option when I do that. And now it's only going to fix that one side. Now we can go back in and we can grab our tool again. And we can start just fixing these areas up. Now notice this is not a curve. If you want to turn that into a curve, but first of all, let me fix that right up to there. We just grab our Plus tool again. And this is, you know, there's different ways of working. This is my particular way I like to work and I've seen, you know, just tap once, allow it and then pull it out. And this seems to work really well for me, like this method. It's just a couple of tools and I just keep it simple. And then with practice, you can get really good at doing this. And it'll get quicker and quicker. So we're going to pull this side out, looking good. We want to pull the other side out. See that just create a nice curve there. Move this into position. Now I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key once again. So I'm just going in here and see how I'm just cleaning that one up. Just a very simple way of working. You know, there's other more complicated ways. And notice that the plus tool I get to do is tap, lift for a second and go like that. Don't click and drag or you'll get some really weird results. And we're just kind of moving it down like that. And look at that. See, that's kind of weird. We're going to have to fix that. So let's just kind of move that in, pull that handle in. See how by pulling that handle in, we can fix that. Looking good. So the length of those handles will determine that curve. We're almost there. Going down there. While I'm doing this, by the way, if you're not a subscriber on Photoshop Cafe, hit that subscribe button right now because I do a new tutorial every single week and I'd love to get it to you. And also hit that notification bell. And that'll let you know whenever I upload a new tutorial. All right, so there we go. We've got a pretty good, you know, selection here. We could spend more time getting this pixel perfect, zooming in, you know. Sometimes I'll zoom in a couple of hundred percent to get this exactly how I want it. You know, because you can do little touch-ups like this all the time. But I think this is going to look pretty good. I'm going to hit Control-0. And then all I would need to do now to turn this path into a selection is I just Control-click. And now we've got a selection right there. All right, so now we're just going to expand this. I'm just going to hit the shift key to expand to that selection. And we're just going to go just around there. We're just kind of selecting that whole area. This point here, we want to mask this out. Just hit the Alt or the Option key, create the mask. And now we've cut out the car. And now we're ready to add, you know, a new background or whatever it is that we'd like to do on there. So if you like this tutorial, hit that like button right now. Uh, by the way, I'm going to give you a link to these exact images that I'm using. The link is underneath where you can go and download those images from Adobe Stock. Now, the cool thing about Adobe Stock is you can use the images for practicing. You can download anything you want. It's going to be a low resolution watermarked version, but it's big enough for you to play and experiment with. And if you decide that you want to purchase that and use it in your work, you can license it and it will update right inside your image. And if you're a photographer, you can sell your images on Adobe Stock. It's really easy. I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can sign up to become a contributor. You can get your photo in front of millions of people and make some extra money. So anyway, I'm curious, out of these different methods, 
Which one of these is your favorite cutout method that we've done here? Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Thank mm -hmm. you.